So this is the beginning of my React hook series where we're going to be going one by one through each hook and explaining not only how to use it, but why you might want to and some of the advantages they have over class components. In this video, we're going to be going over the use state hook. Now, if you want to follow along, I'm going to be using create react app. So I recommend in your terminal, go ahead and run this command npx create react app and then the name of your project. So I already ran this command and I have the project up here and I have app.js open and I just cleaned up some of the cruft. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do yarn to start to run this project and just have it running in the background as we do stuff. All right, so the first thing that I wanted to go over is with hooks is that we now need to only use these with, or we can only use these with functions. We cannot use them with class components. So we can either write a function like so, or you can write a function like this. Either one works. You can use arrow functions or regular functions. You can both use hooks inside of them. It is just comes down to preference. The next thing you need to know, you can put these things inside of functions, but there's some rules around them. I'll link this below all the rules and you can read through them. Um, but these are the main ones here. And basically you can't nest hooks inside of loops, conditions, or functions. Now the nice thing about this is they have some ESLint rules for this. So it's gonna actually tell us when we do stuff wrong because we have, well, you're gonna need an ESLint VS Code plugin, I believe, to see it in here. But also uh, it's gonna be caught by create React app. So what I mean by that, so I can say if true, use state, we say react.use state. Right, so this is the use state hook that I'm just calling right here. You'll notice we got red squigglies here. You'll get this if you have ESLint configured and you have it the plugin in VS Code. You can hover over this and I can see React hooks is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component render. So basically you cannot nest it in if statements and all that jazz. And I think if I come over here, hit save, we should also see it. You also get these warnings in your browser as well if you don't have the VS Code extension. Um, okay, so those are the rules around hooks. Let's go ahead and dig into this use state. Um, so I have it, I'm just calling it like this. I can also call it destructure up here, use state. I'm just a, cl a little cleaner uh, call right there. So this is what we're gonna use now. This is the replacement for uh, state for class components. We use this thing called use state. So here we can call uh, as our first parameter the initial value that's gonna store. So for example, I can say the initial value should be as 10. And I can also, if I want to, uh, have a function that returns the initial value. So the reason why you may wanna do this is if you have a computation that's really expensive. So if we have like a function up here that's like expensive initial state, you know, and it does something like, for example, it does a bunch of for loops or whatever, you may want to call it like this. And that way this is only called on the first time and not on every single time the component renders. Um, so that's good to note. You can basically uh, only have this run on the initial value. All right, so this is going to return an array. And you're never going to see people actually do it like this. You're going to see everyone destructure the array like this. And the first value is the value of the state. So here I can say, uh, you can call it count. Let's do a counter. That's a good first example. And the second value is a function that lets you update the count. Usually people call it set count or whatever the name of it is. And just for simplicity's sake, let's go back to just using 10 here. So here we're going to render count. And then we're also gonna have a button here to press, and then we can update our count. All right, button plus on click. And here we're gonna say set count, and we can say count plus one. So we're using the value here, and then we're incrementing it. All right, and we can plus, and we can see it increments, and that is how we're storing the state for this counter. The other good thing you should know about set count is similar to set state, you can actually pass in a function to this. So instead of grabbing count from up here, I can pass in an updater function. So what an updater function is, it's gonna take a single parameter and you can take, and this is what the current state is. So in this case, count, I could also name this current count. And I can say, and here we wanna return the new, the new state. So I'm saying the current count plus one. All right, so we'll give that a save. 
So this is a good idea to use this to avoid uh, kind of like race condition things and having two updates happen at the same time and the uh, updates get overwritten. Uh, but anyway, that's a side note. So those are the two ways you can call set count here and it's gonna work exactly the same way, just incrementing the count there. Uh, so those are set count. The other good thing to know about use state is it works slightly different than set state. So let's say we have count in here, which is 10. Um, and so I'm now going to destructure this to have count there. We have set count here. And I want another value in here, which is called like um, count two. It's, we're just going to be real basic. And that's going to be 20. So now let's say I want to increment the count here, but I only want to increment count two. So I'm going to say count one count two and let's destructure count two so again you can pretty much store anything you want in here so we are now storing an object and here I'm destructuring that object grabbing the counts um, and I don't know why I went back over there this is this update function now needs to be fixed um, so here we can say the we could call it state we could call it current state this is now an object. So what we can do if we want to increase a new count is say current state dot count plus one. Now, if you're used to this dot set state in class components, you'll know that this update will happen and this count to value won't change. But in hooks, it's a little bit different. As we see, when I increment this, this value disappeared. And that's because it does not do any merging of the objects. All it does is it takes this value and sets it as its state. Meaning if you want to keep any of the other values that are inside of the object, you have to do dot 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 current state, right? You have to keep all the values that it were in the state beforehand, all right? So do I just kill it? Oh yeah, because I need to put this up here. Um, there we go. Because what I need, I'm putting the value of count and count two into the object and then I want to overwrite the count value. And now 20 stays there. Uh, I could also, if you don't want to use dot 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 syntax, you can see this as count two is now equal to current state dot count. So basically, if you store an object in use state here, note that you will need to, whenever you update it, uh, provide all the keys. Um, the other thing about use state is you can use multiple of these things. So there's no reason why we can't just say, instead of using an object here, break these up. All right, so I'm going to do count and count two and do 20. So you can have as many use states as you want up here. So I have one for the value 10, one for the value 20, and this is the set count. And so this simplifies things. So now when I call set count, all I need to return is a new new value for the first count here. And this just won't change count two over here. All right, just doesn't affect it. So if I wanted to increment both of them, when I hit the plus, give it a save, I can say set count and then set count two. All right, and yep, we can use that exact same updater function there and that should work. So now you have kind of a little bit of a decision whether you should split things out into multiple use states or you should use a single use state and use an object. In general, what I do is if I'm going to update both values at the same time like I am here, I'll usually combine them into an object. If I'm only calling one at a time, I'll usually split them up. All right, so that is kind of the basics of use state. I kind of want to now go into why does anyone care about this? Why are these use state hooks useful? And it really comes into defining your own custom logic um, and being able to extract this logic in the hook and use it all over the place. So one thing you may be doing in your application a ton is forms. So we're going to take a look at a form example. So we'll get rid of these counts and we're going to create an input field here. And we're going to display um, an email and a password. And we're going to say type password. All right, and we'll get rid of the button. So to, to basically represent this form, I could have a email 
and a password and I could say set email and set password. And they're going to default to empty strings. And then I'm going to say the value is equal to email. And then on change, I get the event. And I say set email is equal to the event.target.value. And I can copy this logic and I can put on the password. But this I'm going to call set password. Right? And we could do this for all these fields. But if you've used, and we should set the value here. So if you're familiar with React, we don't have to do this, and this is kind of time consuming for each field. Um, but here we can come in here and type some stuff in, and we can see the values. So cool. So how can we do this in a better way? Well, we can extract these hooks into our own custom hook, which handles the state for us. So we're going to create a new hook over here, which I'm going to call useForm.js. So you'll notice the syntax for hooks is you have the use in front or the naming convention, I should say, is you say use and then whatever it is. So use form, because the form state is what I'm storing here. So I'm going to say export const use form. And so this is my own custom hook, and this is where things get cool. So now I can put stuff inside of here, for example, hooks. So I'm going to stick this over here. And now instead of storing it like this, I'm going to store it a little bit differently. So here I'm going to say initial values. And we're going to store the initial values in the state here. I also need to import this. Will it let me auto import it? No, it won't. Shame. Import from React. All right, so the initial values we get here. So these are some form values. I'm going to call them values. And we can say that call this set values here. So now I can return some stuff from my hooks. First, I'm going to return the values here. You'll notice also I'm choosing to return an object here. Uh, this is just preference. You could also return an array if you wanted to and match the syntax of use state. Uh, this is really just up to you. And maybe we can do that just to show you both ways. Um, so we have values here. And then let's say we want to pass in an on change function. And that way we can get handle it for us. So here I'm going to say uh, E. And what we're going to do is we're going to say set values. And we're going to keep all the values inside of there. And then we're going to say e.target.name is equal to e.target.value. So basically, based on the name of the input field, we'll update the value of that value in the form. All right, so now we can use this use form hook over here. So now I'm going to say use form. And the initial values for this, I'm going to say email is an empty string and password is an empty string. And then here I have values and I have handle change. So now I can say values.email, values.password. And for the on change here, I can say handle change. And handle change here. And it's going to update based on the names that I have here. So I can come over here, I can type some stuff, and it works just fine now. And so we were able to encapsulate that logic inside of this little function that I made here. And so now I can use this function or use my hook in other components. And it has no UI associated to it. All it has is the logic, right? And uh, the logic of how we want to store state. And so that is pretty cool. And that is really the big advantage with hooks. And so now we don't have to use a rendered, uh, what's it called? The thing where you do like, for example, a formic library. And I wrap it like this. So again, this kind of hook you would ideally use. Oh, this should be a, this needs to be a fragment. Again, this may be a hook that you get from a form library, but it's good to know how this works. And it's good to know that we can now use uh, hooks like this instead of using rendered props like this. So I usually use formic for forms, and it'll usually look like this. And now I don't have to do that, especially it gets ugly when I have multiple of these. And I have like maybe you know some some uh, rendered props nested inside of them. So this is where hooks shine, and we can easily have two forms here, and the it doesn't get real ugly. Values two, handle change two, and maybe this is first name, last name. Again, I don't know why you'd want to do two forms like that. We could just mash them into one, but you get the idea. We can have tons of hooks just sitting up here, and then we can create our own custom hooks 
and put the logic and reuse that and not have to share any kind of the UI of what it looks like. It's very easy to share the logic. So there you go. That is use state and why it is useful. In the next video, we're going to take a look at use effect.